Hello everyone. I'd like to first of all apologize for my inconsistency of uploads. Um, I've been very busy lately with work and I recently moved house. Um, I moved from Glasgow in Scotland to um, London, um, which was really exciting as I'm sure you can imagine. I'm going to be uploading more frequently now. I'm going to be doing a look for you today that's very simple, that involves red lips, a very classic, very strong look, red lips. And I think you, it's, they can work for anybody, and they do work for anybody. It just depends on the right shade that you use for your skin tone. Obviously, you can wear whatever red you want, but I think for day-to-day um, -day purposes, there are things to take into consideration depending on what colour your skin is and um, what tone it is. There's the orange-based reds and the blue-based reds, and these are the two main sort of tones that we have. It's like with skin when you have the pink or the yellow, but obviously there's more um, undertones that come in between that uh, categories of orange-based red and a blue-based red. And what I mean by that is a red that is a true red, but it has a slight undertone more so orange, or has a slight undertone that's more so blue. I think when you're very, very pale, and if you're more sort of on the pinker side of skin, like myself, or um, more in the blue, as opposed to yellow, it's, um, there's not a lot of yellow or olive in my skin tone. I think the orangey reds can look um, not that flattering on someone of my skin tone. However, a blue based red would suit somebody with my skin tone very well, no matter how light or how, how dark you went with it, it would still look flattering to my skin tone. I think as well, um, sort of skin tones that are um, like the, the sort of the Mediterranean skin tones, they suit orange reds very, very well. It's, also, it's just like all kinds of makeup. Some colours will work for you and some won't. It depends as well for what suits you. You might be the same complexion as myself and have been told that a blue based red would work for you. However, an orange based red might be what suits you best. Um, but I do think for the very, very dark skin tones, I think um, when, you, when you see like a bright orange red, it kind of looks as if it's been stuck on. I must say that the very, very deep skin tones do tend to suit more sort of blue based reds. Um, obviously you can wear whatever colour you like, but uh, these are just things to sort of bear in mind. I use Supercover's Ultimate Face Primer all over, and then I apply this under base by Shumura, and it's the pink one. And after that I went in with Kralin's HD Fluid in the shade 505. And I just give myself a very light layer today. Another Kralin product, to, just to conceal my under eye circles and any discoloration and little blemishes. And it was by Kralin and it's this Supra colour, um, also known as Grease Paint, and it's in the shade 1W. I find that shade works perfectly just for lifting the blue from underneath my eye. And then I set everything through with this absolutely beautiful Topshop powder. I'm absolutely loving this at the moment. It's so fine and beautiful and it looks lovely on the skin. It doesn't look cakey at all. However, it is heavily scented so some of you may love that and some of you may not. It sort of smells like the ghost perfume. It's a lovely scent. But um, I'm currently loving that powder at the moment. My brows today are made up of Omega and Broom by MAC. The red lip that I'll be doing today is more on the blue-red scale of things than it is on the orange-red. I think another tip to bear in mind when wearing a red lip is to take into consideration what you're wearing, what, uh, what the rest of your makeup is going to be like, and I would say apply your red lip before you apply um, you know, your eyes or your cheek makeup, because it can really gauge how much more you need or how much less um, you need. And uh, I think once, well, if you do a red lip last and you've maybe done a smoky eye, it can sometimes look a little bit um, overdone. So that's something to bear in mind. I'd also say as well, if you're wearing a red lip, conceal any redness in your face because um, a red lip is it's really meant to look chic. And I think when you have sort of redness, as most people do around the nose and throughout the face, it sort of tends to look a little bit grubby and I think um, it's important to conceal your redness before wearing a red lip because if you don't, it's, there's sort of there's so much red going on um, you don't really know where to look. So I'm using Max Lip Liner in the shade Red and I would recommend getting quite a sharp point on your lip liner and just start of all, I would say fill in the whole lip that way you will create a stain Another thing I would recommend, if you're not really that confident at um, lining your lip, or if you're not that good at it um, yet, or if you still kind of struggle to line your lip, fill in the, the, the majority of your lip 
before you line it. That way um, you'll be able to see where the lip is in the mouth. I know that sounds very um, slightly obvious, but it will give you a gauge as where to um, where to line your lip if you fill in first. Because um, if you stand back from your mirror, you can sometimes see, um, the, even though it looks perfect, very close up in a mirror, the lip that you've lined, it can sometimes look irregular from quite a far distance or a little bit further away from a mirror. I always find that I have to stand slightly far back because um, one side of my lip, predominantly my, um, my left side of my lip, sort of droops down and slightly lower than my right. So I always have to stand back slightly and uh, estimate and match it up so that they're symmetrical. So I just completely lined the lip. As you can see, it makes my teeth look very white. And then uh, I would say, take a brush. This is a square brush and I find these ideal um, for getting into the little corners, just at the sides of the lip. Um, numerous brands do these. Tom Ford does one, Charlotte Tilbury does one. This is actually an artist brush um, that I bought. I have a few of them and I find that they're perfect for getting into the little corners. But there are also the alternatives that you can buy from um, cosmetic companies. And really push the lip pencil into the lip. That way it'll create a stain that'll be long lasting. The next step is very dry into the lips, but it does make the lipstick last a lot longer. That step is just applying a loose powder to the lips, setting the pencil that you've applied. I'm just applying the Dermacolor Loose White Cryolin Powder. And they just dust off. You can also wear as this as a matte lip, but um, that lip liner is not going to move, nor budge, nor bleed whatsoever now that we've set it. The lipstick I'm going to be using is Red by MAC. I'm taking just a small amount and I'm pushing that into the lip. So that's the lipstick just evenly applied to the lip. And I applied uh, a thin layer but I really pushed it into the lip with a brush. But I'm going to apply a very clever little product called um, a lip tie and this is in the shade Stalker and it's by Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics also known as OCC. Um, it's very popular amongst makeup artists, these lip ties, and it's also very popular here on YouTube. Um, I think they're absolutely fantastic. They're very concentrated, very, very concentrated formulas um, that are very long wearing as well. But this is very similar to the shade that I'm wearing right now, and it's slightly deeper, the colour. But I'm only using a tiny drop, you only need the smallest amount. And I'm applying, as you can see, I've probably applied a wee bit too much. Now that's the lip completed. I am going to have a gloss, but I'm going to complete the rest of my makeup first. Um, you can really gauge as what you now need um, in terms of the eyes and cheeks by placing the red on first. I'm looking quite um, washed out. So I'm just taking a Mega by MAC, which is an eyeshadow, but I use it as a contour because it's a perfect shade. And I'm using it on a NARS number no. 2 brush. And I don't want to apply too much, I want to keep the skin really natural because uh, I didn't apply a thick base today like I usually do. Um, I think when you have a strong lip or something in the makeup that's super strong, I think if you have too heavy a base it can look just a little bit, um, it stops looking chic. And then I'm going to apply this absolutely gorgeous highlighter by uh, Makeup Academy and it's called Undress Your Skin and it has a lovely sort of pinky purpley reflex to it so I'm just going to apply that just a tiny bit of it just to the tops of my cheeks just to give it a slight sheen and a tiny little bit in the centre of the forehead I just think if you don't have sort of a slight sheen um, it can look slightly dead there but I don't like it to look too glossy or shiny just slightly down the nose, I don't really want to take it to the end, but it can waken up the face a tiny bit of a sheen and a little bit on the chin. With the cheeks and the eyes done, you can really gauge as what to do now with the eyes. I don't think I'm going to do too much, I think I'm just going to apply a little bit of the Omega. I tend to use this colour so much, and I'm applying the Omega on an Inglot 6SS brush. Now, I don't want to apply too much, I'm just going to sort of dust it on the socket and sweep it over the lid slightly, just to give a tiny, tiny bit of definition. Now I'm not going to really line the eyes too much, I'm just going to take a tiny bit of carbon on a Space NK liner brush, and carbon is just a black eyeshadow, 
and I'm just going to push that now into the lash line. And then I'm just going to take a Zova 234 brush and just blend in what I've done. And then I'm taking a Zova 231 brush and just smoking in that line even more. It almost becomes like a very light grey haze of eyeshadow. Now I don't want these eyes to look too grey, so I'm just going to go in with the Omega again on the same brush and apply that just to the lower lash line. I think that when black eyeshadow is applied directly to skin as pale as mine, it starts to go slightly blue. I'm just using Espresso by MAC, which is a very beautiful um, caramel, sort of dark brownish, but still uh, sort of, it's sort of, it's a very, very warm brown. I'm just smoking that up and out, but I don't want it to become any sort of winged eye. With the eyes complete, then you may now curl eyelashes. I'm then just going to apply a black mascara, and I'm using the Mrs. Sporty Pump Up Booster Mascara. It's a very cheap, but very effective mascara. And I'm applying that with a spoolie, because I find the brush is just ever so slightly too big for my eyelashes. With the mascara applied, that completes the look. I think red lips are a really, really chic thing, if done correctly. This colour is appearing slightly more um, orangey red than it was blue. Um, I haven't really added gloss because when you overdraw lips and apply gloss, the gloss that's over the lip line uh, emphasises the fact that you've overdrawn it because um, it's drawing light to that area. Therefore it's reflecting light showing up that area. You want to sort of hide the false lip line. I don't tend to wear lip gloss normally, especially with red lips, but I think I'll add um, some MAC lip glass today, just to make it super glossy. Now I'm not going to apply too much of that to the top lip as it will emphasise the fact that I've overdrawn mine today. So there you have it, a super glossy, uh, very chic, very glamorous um, red lip. I think this lip can be worn absolutely anywhere. Personally it's not my first choice of lips but I do think red lips look great on absolutely everybody. I hope that you find that either interesting or helpful and once again thank you so much for watching and of course take care of yourself. Bye!